Hi everyone, I'm Evangelos Kalajorakis from UMass Amherst. I'm presenting our paper, MORIG, Motion Aware Rigging of Character Messages from Point Clouds. This work was done by Chan Xu from UMass Amherst, Yang Zhou from Adobe Research, Li Yi from Chigua University, and me. The goal of MORIG is to transfer motion from a performing character captured in a single view point cloud sequence to a target character mesh. MORIG animates the target mesh according to the point cloud motion, as you see here. The motion transfer is achieved by inferring an appropriate 3D rig for the target mesh and controlling it such that the target mesh follows closely the motion captured in the point cloud. The output rig includes both the skeleton that you see here animated on the bottom, as well as skin weights visualized here. Our method is not constrained within a particular character category or skeletal template. It can rig and animate diverse characters such as quadrupeds here or toy puppets with varying articulation structure. Character rigs have been the workhorse of articulated figure animation for several decades. Without rigs, it's difficult for animators and casual users to animate their character models. Our work is motivated by the desire to further automate the rigging and animation process driven by point cloud data captured with commodity sensors. Our task is challenging since we need to be robust in noise, missing regions, occlusions, and mismatches between part proportions of the captured and target characters. Our work is related to prior methods aiming to infer rigs for input 3D models of characters. For example, Pinocchio performed optimization to fit a predefined skeleton template to a 3D model. Handcrafting templates for every possible structural variation of a character is, however, cumbersome. Rignet proposed a template-free learning-based solution to skeleton prediction and skinning for input 3D models. However, it processes exclusively the input 3D geometry without taking into account any motion cues. As a result, its output skeletons may not necessarily capture underlying articulating parts. A different approach to rigging is to discover rigid parts from mesh sequences. However, these methods assume mesh inputs without noise or missing data and cannot perform motion transfer. More related to our work are methods that attempt to discover articulating parts from point cloud data. Earlier efforts focus on segmenting target models based on point clouds representing different articulation states of objects. Another line of work extracts deformation graphs for neural reconstruction. However, none of these approaches are able to extract controllable rigs and cannot handle motion transfer to different characters. Morig instead offers a complete deep learning solution to rigging 3D character models, as well as animating them through motion transfer from point clouds. Let's now discuss our method pipeline. Our input is a target character in the form of a polygon mesh and the sequence of point clouds capsules from a sensor. Our pipeline processes the target character and point cloud sequence in a series of stages. In our first stage, our method computes partial correspondences between vertices of the target character and points in each frame of the input sequence, as you see here, for a couple of exemplar vertices. The correspondences are probabilistic. Its vertex corresponds to a fuzzy area in each point cloud frame. The correspondences are used in our next stage to drive a smooth deformation of the target mesh to input point cloud frames. The deformed meshes are processed by the motion encoding stage, which converts the per-vertex trajectories into compact feature representations. Vertices lying on the same rigid part acquire similar features as visualized at the bottom left here. Vertices with similar RGB colors have similar feature representations. These features basically reveal articulating parts like lower arms, upper arms, head. Different parts have distinctive colors. Therefore, these features are helpful in our next stage, which performs rigging. The features drive the prediction of an appropriate skeleton and skinning weights for the target mesh. 
Now, the last stage finally animates the predicted rig so that the target character follows the motion of the deformed meshes and therefore the original point cloud motion. Let's discuss our correspondence stage now in more detail. The target mesh is first processed by a craft convolutional module operating on the mesh using both topological and geometric information. We use the GM edge net to this end. For more details about this mesh neural network, please see our previous rig network. The network encodes its vertex into a high dimensional descriptor. Its row here corresponds to a vertex descriptor. Furthermore, its point cloud frame is encoded by a point-based neural network in the form of point net plus plus. As a result, each point in the frame will be embedded into a high dimensional descriptor as well. We evaluate the affinity of each vertex with each point descriptor through dot product similarity. The result is stored in a matrix whose entries represent the vertex point matching scores. For example, given a vertex on the target character, like the one here, its descriptor will be compared to all point descriptors of the point cloud. And as a result, the vertex will acquire matching scores with all points stored in this row. In this manner, the vertex acquires a probabilistic, or in other words, soft correspondence with the point cloud. The matching scores, the per vertex and per point descriptors, are further processed by a multi-layer perceptron, MLP, that extracts a correspondence mask. The mask stores probabilities for each vertex to have any correspondences with the point cloud. The reason for having this mask is that some vertices, like this one here, may have invalid scores, since such vertices may not correspond to any points in the point cloud due to structural differences between the target and captured characters or simply occlusions in the point cloud. The matching scores and correspondence mask drive the deformation of the target character towards its point cloud frame as done in our next stage. Specifically here for each vertex, we first extract a candidate displacement towards a location in the point cloud, which is computed as a weighted average of the locations of its most similar points. The weights are based on its matching scores. For vertices with no correspondences, as candidate displacement, we use the one computed from their geodesically nearest vertex with a valid correspondence. The resulting per vertex candidate displacements are concatenated with the correspondence mask and all together are processed by another graph convolutional network, trained to propagate deformations to vertices with no correspondences, according to our mask, and also trained to produce a coherent deformation of the mesh towards the point cloud frame. By repeating the same steps for different point cloud frames, we acquire a deformed mesh sequence. This sequence is processed by our motion encoding states, whose goal is to encode the per-vertex trajectories. Here, our input is a tensor of size number of vertices by number of frames by three. The tensor basically stores its 3D vertex location for each frame. We then encode its frame into a higher dimensional representation with a graph convolution network and use a transformer encoder to aggregate the resulting frame representations into a compact feature capturing the motion for its vertex. The vertex features are visualized here at the bottom right by embedding them into RGB space. As explained earlier, these motion aware features capture underlying articulating parts and therefore are particularly useful for rigging in our next stage. More specifically, the mesh geometry and the motion aware features are processed through a graph convolutional network and differentiable clustering to extract skeletal joints, which are then connected through a minimum spanning tree algorithm that outputs the final skeleton. The pipeline for skeleton extraction here follows a rig net, with the main difference being the use of motion aware features as input instead of relying on static geometry alone. The skeleton and motion aware features are also processed by another graph convolutional network that outputs skinning weights. 
For more details about skeleton extraction and skinning, please see our paper and the rig net. Given the predicted rig, the next step is to animate it. Here, we apply full body inverse kinematics to compute joint angles such that the rigged mesh follows the previously deformed mesh as closely as possible. By applying the same procedure iteratively to all the frames, we obtain an animation sequence closely following the input point cloud motion. We now describe training. First, we pre-train our whole pipeline on the model's resource dataset. The dataset has ground truth rigs for a diverse set of characters. However, it doesn't have any animations. To better utilize the dataset, we synthesize animation sequences for each mesh by applying random rotations to joints and keyframes, then interpolate the motion for the rest of the frames. We also simulate synthetic point cloud captures for each frame. As a result, we train our pipeline in a supervised manner using ground truth vertex point matching pairs, simulated correspondence masks, vertex positions of the training meshes under different skeletal deformations, the training skeletons with their joints, their bone connectivity, and finally, the ground truth skin weights. In blue, we show all combinations of losses used based on this supervisory signals. For more details, please see our paper. We further fine tune our pipeline in the deforming things for the dataset. Instead of randomly generated motion, this dataset contains realistic motion data for motion capture as well as artists' animations. We simulate again point cloud captures and use the simulated vertex point matching pairs, masks, and deformed vertex positions as supervision. The dataset does not have any ground truth skeletons, therefore, we do not use the rest of the losses. Let's move on to show some results of our method. This is the resulting rigging and animation for a character driven by the motion of a real world performing human from the so called Faust dataset. Note the different part proportions between the source and target character. Our method still discovers plausible bones. Here's another example. Our method transfers the motion from this real-world point cloud from the Faust dataset, despite structural differences of the target character, such as its clothes accessories or helmet. This is an example of a captured toy duck from the Killing Fusion dataset. We transfer the motion to a similar 3D puppet. The predicted skeleton is more coarse here, since the whole arms and legs of the puppet move rigidly. Here we rig and animate the 3D character of this alien from a humanoid point cloud sequence. This is a different motion transfer using the same 3D target character and rig. This is another motion transfer example for a child point cloud. And finally, here is assuming motion transfer case. Let's now show some comparisons. This is a comparison with RigNet. On the left, we show the test input point cloud sequence. In the middle, we show the skeleton predicted by RigNet. As you see, it misses important joints such as the hips. More rig produces a more complete skeleton, resulting in a more plausible motion transfer. Here is another example from our test set. RigNet creates several unnecessary joints in the head and results in distorted head deformations. Morig produces a more plausible skeleton and animation. Here we show quantitative comparisons for skeleton prediction. We apply the Hungarian algorithm to form a matching between predicted joints from RigNet and ground truth ones. We do the same for Morig. The precision recall and intersection over a union are defined based on the resulting matching. Higher numbers indicate better performance. We also evaluate the chamfer distance between predicted and ground root joints. From the table, we can see our method outperforms RigNet according to all measures for skeleton prediction. In terms of animation evaluation, we measure the L2 distance between ground root vertex positions and predicted ones averaged over all frames. Our method yields significantly lower error. For more details on evaluation, please see our paper. To summarize our work, 
our method represents a first step towards learning base rigging and motion transfer from point clouds. It can handle diverse characters with varying structure and morphology. Our neural deformation aligns masses with point clouds under noise, occlusion, and small structural differences. It can be potentially useful for other applications such as template-based point cloud reconstruction. Finally, our motion encoder compactly encodes motion trajectories of mass vertices into features revealing articulating parts, which can be useful in other applications such as motion-based retrieval and segmentation. MORIG does have limitations and exciting avenues for future work. If a part is not visible in an input sequence at all, such as a tail, our method will be entirely based on the geometry of the target character instead of the motion and may fail to create a bone for that part. Large changes in geometry and poses between the captured and target character may result in inaccurate correspondences, deformations, therefore rigs, and motion transfers. Finally, our method is currently limited to linear blend skinning. Here's our project page, including source code and data. Thank you for your attention.